Let's do another example involving friction. Um, the same situation really as last video. I'm going to push a 10 kilogram object across the floor, across the desk, by applying a force of 40 newtons. And this time the object goes at a constant speed. Constant speed, uniform motion, acceleration is zero. Bing! Super easy Newton's first law. But I'm still going to follow the steps my physics teacher has been desperately trying to teach me. So I'm going to draw a nice big free body diagram. Here is my 10 kilogram object. What forces are there? Of course there's gravity on it which is 98 Newtons down. It's resting on a surface so there's Fn which is up. How big is Fn? I do not know because I haven't finished my free body diagram. What other forces? I'm pushing it to the right. So I'll call that Fa. Fa is 40 newtons. I like to throw all my givens into my free body diagram. And is there friction? How do I know there's friction? Because whenever I push something across the surface, there's friction. Hopefully, you understand Newton's second law. There has to be friction because if there wasn't, this thing would be accelerating at 4 meters per second squared, right? 40 over 10. Easy. There is no acceleration. The acceleration is zero. Uniform motion, so there's got to be a force this way. And it's got to be 40 newtons. And what could be doing it? It's got to be friction. Because the question didn't say anything else about anyone else pushing on the box. So, I'll put a question mark technically. I mean, this is really easy. Bing. Newton's first law. A is zero. These are balanced. Those are balanced. But I'll write out my steps anyway, just like a good physics student. F A minus F F is equal to M A. And in the y direction, I can see that F N minus F G is equal to zero. So, F N is equal to F G. I can put on my Karawana marks. And because this thing is accelerating not at all, I can see that F A is equal to FF, so I can put on my double Karawana marks. And I know the force of friction is therefore equal to 40 Newtons. So I've done that. I know the normal force is 98. I've solved all this stuff and I haven't even read the question very carefully. What am I trying to find again? I'm trying to find mu. What's the coefficient of friction? So I know, of course, that friction is equal to mu Fn and therefore mu is equal to FF over FN. I know you guys don't want to write the original equation and then rearrange it, but 30% of the time kids start here, they get this backwards. Write out the original equation and do the math. That's my advice to you, but you are free to ignore it. So FF is of course 40 newtons out of 98 newtons, and that means about 0.41. I haven't mentioned this before, but we could just think of mu as a percentage, right? What percent of Fn is FF? And if you think of mu as a percentage, how big is FF as a percent of Fn, then it's really hard to forget the formula because percentages are really easy, right? If you got 40 out of 98 on a test, you would know that you failed. So mu is equal to 0.41. This thing is sliding at a constant speed, so that is mu k technically, but that's not too important in this question. Now that's all part A. In part B, somebody else comes along and pushes down on the box. As I'm pushing it, someone else comes down along and they push down on the box with a force of, I believe it's 20 Newtons. And the question is, what's the acceleration of the box now? I'm not going to draw a new free body diagram because I don't have enough space. I'm just going to add this. What should I call this purple force? I'm going to call it FD for the force that's down. I could call it FA, but I already have an FA. I could call them FA1 and FA2, but I hate having two subscripts. I'm just going to call it FD because it's the down force. But if this was a test and the force was up, I would not call it FU. So what's the acceleration now? Looking at my new free body diagram, I'll look at my x and y equations. I've got a new free body diagram, so I have to have new x and y equations. Now Fn minus Fg is not equal to zero, because I've also got a minus Fd. That will be equal to zero. The acceleration is still to the right. I'm still going to call x to the right. My x direction equation will say that Fa minus Ff equals Ma. That's just fine. 
rearranging, shoving in, solving. What am I trying to find? I'm trying to find acceleration. So the acceleration is going to be Fa minus Fn, which is mu Fn, minus Ff, I said, over m. And I know that Fa is 40. And I know that mu is 0.41. But I don't know Fn. I know, F, I know the mass is 10. So I've got to go back to my y equation and find Fn. Fn is equal to Fg plus Fd. And that's 108 newtons. So I'll put that in here, 108 newtons. Remember, Fn is not equal to Fg. It was in part A because there was no acceleration up or down, and there were only two forces, so they had to be balanced. But in part B, the acceleration was that way. And so all of a sudden, the acceleration up and down is still zero, but now there's a third force here. So normal force has to balance gravity and the force that's down. It's got to balance both those. It's got to grow. Fn is not equal to Fg. Not always. Shoving everything in, getting my answer, I get an answer of negative 0.82 meters per second squared. And I stop to make sure that it makes sense. What's my actual answer? The acceleration is 0.82 meters per second squared backwards or to the left. And I think to myself, does that make sense? Yeah, of course it does. The force of friction is going to be bigger than my applied force. Because the applied force I was applying was just enough to balance friction. But Fn grew, so friction grew, so the thing is going to accelerate backwards, which means it slows down. No problem, not very surprising. Do notice, though, that mu did not change. Because as we said in a couple of videos ago, mu depends on the smoothness of the two surfaces. That didn't change, so mu doesn't change.